when you are in a serious relationship let's say you are dating you know you are cutting and you are looking at getting married these are conversations that you must have the person should be able to tell you how much they are earning because you are dating somebody looking at spending the rest of your life with that person you want to know how much they are earning you want to understand certain things about their finances so <laughs> all right as a matter of fact, by research, it shows that one of the major things that causes crisis in marriages uh, uh, is actually money issues. Hello, everyone. Hi. <laughs> my name is Debbie, and this is my awesome husband. Victor. I'm uh, Debbie, Debbie. <laughs> Debbie and Vic. So, are you in a relationship and, uh, you know, there are certain red flags that when it comes to finance that you actually must not uh, ignore because when you ignore them it has a way of biting you later in the yeah. future and the money issues is usually one of the major reasons why couples uh, break up because um, there's one songwriter that says that love is sweet though but when money enters it love is sweeter Guess the person that wrote that song. <laughs> All right. As a matter of fact, by research, it shows that one of the major things that causes crisis in marriage is, uh, uh, is actually money issue. Apart from infidelity, one other thing is money. Yeah. And infidelity itself sometimes to have a way of being entangled also with, with money. money sometimes. All right. So it shows that money is critical when it comes to love, when it comes to relationship. And it's a conversation that must be had. It's a conversation you must have actually before, you know, uh, setting out to, you know, uh, to make a decision to want to be with that person and spend the rest of your life with that person. Yeah. So one of the things that have actually helped us in our marriage, we are three years married now, yeah. is um, financial transparency. So it's basically... Um, bringing everything to the table to say, this is how much I earn. Um, this is how much we have as a family so that we were able to like plan based on our income. This is what we can afford. This is what we cannot afford. This is uh, what we need to save up for. So if you're both transparent as a couple, it helps you in your financial journey to be able to make plans and set goals together. There are some marriages that they don't even know what's, each of them ends and so when the husband says he does not have you don't actually believe him because you don't know what is actually capable of so which is not good um i think as a couple you should both be transparent about your finances yeah yeah and uh, let's even just say let's say you are not even a couple now because we said relationship you could be married let's say you are not even married if you are not even married, you are just in a relationship, you have to also look into that aspect. When you are in a serious relationship, let's say you are dating, you know, you are cutting and you are looking at getting married. These are conversations that you must have. The person should be able to tell you how much they are earning because you are dating somebody, looking at spending the rest of your life with that person. You want to know how much they are earning. You want to understand certain things about their finances so uh that is very important if the person is not transparent with you and say oh you are not my wife yet or something like that you know i mean it's something but i mean if you are in a very serious relationship it's something to talk about and it's something that you both need to be transparent about but about how much you earn uh monthly basis either from if it's business you are doing or that either from an income yeah. needs to know what comes into the person yeah yeah and another thing i would say is that one thing you should consider a red flag before getting married to someone is if it's someone that spends recklessly like they they just have very irresponsible spending habits mm. you know imagine collecting a salary and then by the 15th of that month the person is already broke and you're like okay so what are you going to do now it's before you get your next salary and they're looking at maybe getting loans from bank and paying payday loans mm. you know it should be a red flag because it shows that if if you need to like um do something together for example buy a house you know do things together in your marriage yeah. you're going to be having issues because 
this is someone that overspends and you you're trying to save and it will just keep frustrating you every single time yeah so constant overspending and living beyond your means is actually a very big red flag yeah i i for one uh you know before i got married it was something i look out for and sometimes when i notice that i think it's it's it gives me second thought anytime any day you know uh I mean, my wife, when I met her, that was not something I, I, I saw on her. I saw what she was doing, very making difficult. for herself. But I mean, she was living very, very moderate and stuff. I know that they were ladies of our age that I mean, at that class where she's not married, no responsibility that she would have been, you know, trying to just showcase and buy things and do things that she does not uh, need. But I saw that in her, and for me, that's that was really good to the extent that even while we're dating or planning to move, I was confident to just, you know, send my salary to her account just because she's the one that I just believe <laughs> that she's going to run everything. And it was running everything. So, and when we are planning for weddings too, that we needed to contribute, we are using our account. I was putting in money there and stuff, but I trusted her and I, I because. I could see in her that she doesn't just spend or try to live, you know, above her I means. So this is also something that um, um, you need to look into. Then I would say also large amount of unexplained debt, you know, or debt, debt himself is not even a good one. But when debts that people can't even explain, you know, you talk to some people say, I don't even know how I'm able to owe them up to this certain amount. Have you spoken to people like that or people that, you know, they have just borrowed and borrowed and collected debt from bank to different places, you yeah. know, uh, I mean, it's, 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 it's annoying. So you need to watch out for people like that. I say there's good debt and there's bad debt. Yeah. So that's why I say honestly, there are debts that someone can collect. Maybe he's a business person and he collected that money because he wanted to use it for business. Something goes wrong. Things like that happen. All right. But if you will begin to borrow to spend on necessary things, borrow to buy a car, you know, a car that I just want to cruise around, not like he's using it for business, borrow just for, you know, just for, frivolities or for things that are really not going to be useful uh, borrow to fund lifestyle that they can't afford or is in debt because he needed to buy things that are liabilities and not assets i think those are big red flags that you need to look out for yeah in short the person to that person that you guys have um toasting each other and sending <laughs> early money text to the person tomorrow as they are Asking the person, ask the person that, Uncle, do you have any debts? Because when debt collectors come, they will carry you and him together. <laughs> they will carry both of you together when debt. So, if you have a child for him, they can collect the charge as a collateral. So, <laughs> try and be asking important questions like hmm. that. And if they say, Yes, I have debt, I would not say leave the person. Ask the person, What is your plan? To pay back your debt you know are you paying it a little how did you get into it so are you be able to assess the situation and determine if it is what you staying in the relationship or not you know yeah yeah um i think also one one bad habit you should look people that are addicted to gambling and betting i use the word addiction i know in this age now there are people that say, oh, you know, but I know I'm not going into that debate here right now. But what I'm saying is that uh, because I've heard people say, no, if you are not addicted, it's just something you do. You play some odd, you know, but what I'm saying is that there are some people that, you know, they are addicted to this thing that they can't, they can't live without it. They earn their salary. They use it on, they borrow money. They use it to bet, use it to gamble with the dream that one day they will hit the <laughs> jackpot. <laughs> Run, no. <laughs> sister brother you need to look very well that's a very big red flag such people many times might not be able to put funds together save together you know some can even go as far as taking an a family asset just to sell yeah, just to use it to gamble it's so, so it's 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 a red flag for me any day anytime you know when you see people that are addicted to gambling and addicted to but they can even use you as their wife to bet. 
<laughs> Funny, yeah. but I mean, people do so, all sort of nonsense. So uh, that's really a, a bad financial um, uh, habit. A big red flag for me, you know, if I see someone, yeah. Yeah, and then I would say that um, if you have someone that is always running away from the important deep conversations about money, then mm. it's a red flag. You know, you should be able to sit down with your partner to say, oh, what is our budget? Um, how are we, um, what, what, how far have we gone with this goal that we have? This is our money goal that we have. How are we doing with this month's budget? Are we be, have we been able to stick in, stick to it? You know, we, we have those kind of conversation because yeah. we're like, I like to save, but then sometimes I like to splurge. Mm. And then my husband likes to save a lot. So I'm just like, so there, there'll be times that you'll be like, um, the money in our account, the way you are spending, my love. <laughs> you know, those kind of, and then me to offer my face, like, what are you trying to say? You know, and even those are difficult conversations to have. Yeah. But then sometimes we just like, let's, have okay, have let's it, sit yeah. down and have this talk. Um, how far we go with our budget, and then he, he is always the one that is cautioning that I w- we're spending too much at this time, we're doing too much. Can we reduce it a bit and all of that? It's a hard conversation for us sometimes, but you have to have it, you know, so that you'll be able to be on the same page financially and um, set goals and then achieve your goals and keep each other accountable. So, that is one thing that you should look out for. It is actually a hard conversation to do, especially if you are the one that has to make some of those hard conversations <laughs> at times. But the thing is that you really need that. I think both of you can't be the same level many times, right? Like sometimes you need those conversations to get um, yourself together. And then it depends on how you also bring those conversations, all right? You don't say it in a very demeaning way and some of those stuff like that. You bring it looking at the fact that as a family we have this aim how are we looking at can we checkmate it and stuff but my wife is amazing i think when it comes to uh, of course spending but sometimes you know <laughs> she, you she possibly <laughs> possibly just just want to explore a little which is good sometimes i also allow her to explore but thank god for her because i think maybe it, if i was just to be the one there are several things we explore and do that maybe we might not really do. But sometimes we do it and I felt like, oh, this thing is nice. So what I've learned to do is just to allow her sometimes. But of course, we try to make it within budget. We have certain amount that has to go on into our investment, certain amount that has to go on into this. You know, then we can look at how do we, what can we play with at the end of the day? Yeah. And then I get flexible a little bit when it comes to that, although, but sometimes if I need to press the caution button, I just do. Yeah. Yeah. And then I also talk about um, financial control and manipulation. So um, ideally, because you're an adult, you should not be in a relationship with someone that likes, to, that tries to use money to control, you, you know, some men i don't know there might be women too that uses money as a weapon in a relationship to be able to control to say um for some men they'll say oh you you know when we talk about joint accounts because we both have love and respect for each other and we we could manage it um together but some would say some husband would say oh you have to submit your income to mm, me, to me yeah. you know, and, like you know, if you try to manipulate the wife, um, you, you're not, you're not working the same. The, the role is different for you. He can spend his money anyhow. Yeah. But she There's has no to, accountability. Yeah. For him. But then she has to give him all his uh, money yeah. and then all of that. So if someone is trying to manipulate you with finance, maybe you, you have to do something before he gives you money you or she has hmm. to do something you know those kind of things you know it when you are being manipulated or controlled so it should be a red flag and you should probably take it very seriously because there will be times in your marriage when you are really vulnerable and you need your partner's support you could lose your job for example and hmm. you have one person earning yeah, in the yeah. family or for example right now i'm I'm not working because I just had a baby and we're relying heavily on my husband's um, income. And 
there are several things so you need to be with someone that loves respects you no matter what and will not try to control you with money and render you um vulnerable or, or or powerless when it comes to that yeah 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 I, I agree to that you know another thing also is have a conversation around the concept of money generally yeah concept of money how to make money how to spend money and how to invest money that's what i mean those three concepts of money some people know how to spend but they don't know how to make some people know how to make, but they don't know how to manage. Some possibly we know how to make, but they might not even know anything about investment. So you need to have very reasonable conversations. Yeah. We had very good conversation about money, to be very sincere. Like we had conversation to the expert that, you know, before then we even went into trying to do investment in land and all that. So we had very detailed conversations. So please have those conversations about money. There you will know some comes from some background where they tell them if you make money, you go to hell. You know, those kind of teaching. Or some will tell you, oh, it is hard though if you are rich for you to make heaven. So you see people grow up with some perceptions like that about money and yeah. they don't like to have conversations about it. Yeah. They don't see it as something that they need, they need, they need to have. They don't see it as something that they need to be wealthy and live a good life because of their philosophies and their ideologies about money. You know, some even just tell you, heaven is the goal. I'm just going to, you know, I'm, I, I want to go to heaven too and I know I'm going to heaven. But God has put us here at this time on earth, all right? And God expects us to dominate, flourish. We need finance to be able to do some stuff. So I'm of that school of thought that I believe that we are a Christian, there is promises for you, you know, God has this, and then, you know, you shouldn't shy away from such conversation. But I know that there are some extreme teachings that make some people useless here, believing that they are going to be relevant in heaven, you know, <laughs> why they are useless, why here on earth, to the kingdom of God and even to their community. Yeah, I, I'll just go back that hope to say that God said he's going to give us everything that pertains to life and godliness. So God wants you to live a good life on earth. He wants you to have money. He wants you to be rich. So you should know that it is one of your kingdom right as a child of God. So don't share away from it. And then I would last add that um, get help. You know, we, we nobody is born with all of these traits on mm. how to manage money, how to invest, how to how to save. But then if you are able to like sit down as a couple, have that ad hoc, you know, know you, where your strengths are, know who is good with numbers, put the person in charge of the account, the family account. And then if you need to get help, get help. Um, we paid a professional how much mm -hmm. um, earlier? Was uh, it earlier this year? Yeah, this year, yeah. yeah we, when we wanted to look at stock Yeah, uh, When stock we wanted investment. to go into investment, we just like, okay, we don't know enough to just dabble into it. And then we had a sit down, a consultation call with a professional that guided us through setting up an investment account showed us how to do it and then we paid that a lot of money but then because we needed the help we could get it so speak to um get help if you need to someone to help you with how to set up an expense account savings how to go about investment and all of hmm. that but don't shy away from that conversation so that you'll be able to know what your strength is what your weaknesses are and then you'll be able to have a way like formulate a plan yeah. to work around it yeah 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 that's 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 really a good point uh something else again to mention is when when you meet people that live from paycheck to paycheck and they are addicted borrowers <laughs> you need to run away from such kind of people or the urgent 2k bros and sisters you know you <laughs> but what, what, what i mean is that you know some people literally live from paycheck to paycheck like they don't have savings yeah it, but before the months has ended they are already looking for where they need to borrow money or who they need to borrow money from right you, you need to you need to be careful about such um uh, kind of people they are a very big red flag right you are and some of them will use the excuse that what i'm earning is not enough that is why i need to keep borrowing if it's even earning whatever 
his, his dream salary is, the person will still continue with that habit. He should learn how to cut things and, you know, uh, money things within his means. So when you have people like that, that they are always, you know, looking for who to borrow from, you know, and living from paycheck to paycheck, I don't think that is a good sign of a partner that you want to spend the rest of your life with. Or if you already have such kind of partner, like you're married with such kind of person, it's a big conversation that both of you need to have. If you need to see a financial advisor to guide you, to talk to you, you know, if you need to talk to somebody to guide you through an older couple that you both respect and they are doing well in that aspect, you actually need to seek counsel because it's a big problem. And if you live paycheck to paycheck, there is no how you can do anything, you know, anything serious with your life. And, you know, if things goes wrong, let's say one person loses his job or the person loses his job, what happens? If you live paycheck to paycheck, it means that, you know, you won't be able to afford um, um, a lifestyle for yourself and stuff like that, all right? Um, well, that's where the place of um, income insurance come in <laughs> anyway. You can do income insurance too. Now, I think that's another thing to do where you can protect your income. In the, but that is not just for people that you know you just spend. If you if you are just a bad spender, a borrower, income insurance won't work for you. It's, it's just for people that in the event that you are sick or in the event that um, um, you have an injury and then you can't work, you know, then the insurance company can step in to pay um, that particular amount, let's say it's £1,500 or how much you want to be collecting yeah. in a month. And then they can pay you, some pay up to one year, some pay up to two years until you can return back to work when you are okay or possibly uh, when that injury heals up. Well, but if something you're interested in, I mean, you can talk to me about it. I can give you it's professional uh, mortgage um, so uh, um, uh, <laughs> advice. But that's something you can actually you look at. You probably reach yeah. out to him for all your, all your insurance needs. Yeah. And he's in a free a free consultation, um, no obligation um, consultation where you can talk about your insurance um, yeah. questions. You can ask him your insurance questions. So, if you need one, you can just drop a comment. Yeah, I think the other one I'll mention then, if my wife had others, is a part of you, this, uh, when people disregard financial planning and goals, like let's sit down and discuss, have a goal, either as a family or as a about to wed couple, what are goals? We had goals. Even if we were to stay back in Nigeria, we had a goal for that. Yeah. If we, if eventually our moving out of the country worked out, which eventually worked out, we had a goal. So why we came in, you know, we, we are careful about the people that we have as close friends also. We are careful about the people that we receive career advice from, right? Because we, 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 we were ambitious. We had a goal. We had a goal about the kind of life we wanted to live. We wanted to travel, we wanted to be able to afford things. We wanted a situation whereby we are not going and living from paycheck to paycheck. So we, we needed to see, to plan and have goals. But if you have someone that does not want to sit down, have such kind of uh, discussion, you know, have such kind of planning section, then uh, it's also a very big, uh, a big red flag because some will just say, no, don't worry. Let's just keep spending anything that comes. Some will tell you it is God that provides and it is God that knows the future. So you don't need to plan. But what I tell people is that live as if possibly you are going to uh, not die in the next hundred years. At the same time, be conscious of the fact also that possibly tomorrow could be the last day. So when you live that way, uh, it changes your ideologies in how you do things, but at the same time, it also helps you to also plan also for the future. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Is that all? I think I think that's all I have from my side. I think yeah, are some of the red flags people should look out for, uh, especially if you are about going into uh, a relationship, like any relationship, and looking at going to marry, or even if you are married already. These are conversations that you need to have. These are red flags that shows that financially it will be a problem for you guys in the later future. And you need to sit down to talk about this red flag. Look for ways that you can trash it. Look for ways that you can sort them out. Yeah. 
yeah so tell us where you're watching this video from we're trying to um get to know our audience more so and thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe that's um, a way to encourage us to like drop more informational videos like this please subscribe <laughs> subscribe and share with someone and if you've ever been in a relationship that's a result of mourning you guys broke up or something if you want to share please share or uh, if you if you've been in such scenario and you guys have been able to handle it amicably and you are doing better now you want to share with people some of the things you do you know to be able to handle such kind of red flag and still yet you are still together and waxing strong we would like to hear from you too all right